How's it going, man? It's going great. Yeah, dude, I, I've been having some trouble recently. I have, I have a lot of people have been complaining about hitting. A bunch of whiners. Yeah, like, oh, every time I hit, I hit the tape. Oh, my arm always hurts, like right here. Oh, wait, why do they always know where I'm gonna hit? I can't hit hard. I can, you know, try to bounce, but it just doesn't go hard. Every time I hit, it, it goes out of bounds. I'm too strong. Spatching. Can't even hit with topspin. Oh, did I mention my arm hurts? Oh, my arm hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, we're going to talk about how to have the perfect arm swing so you got no pain, you can detonate when you need, and you become unreadable. Yeah, you can hit all the shots that you need while also being comfortable while you're doing it. We can raise that confidence as well as raising that attack hitting percentage. Here's a little outline for this video. First thing we're going to cover is where you need to be flexible and where you need to be strong. The second part is key body positions. We're gonna get going right now. But before we do, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, make sure you get the notifications when we come out with new videos. Let's get to some attacking, baby. This is better at beach. <laughs> where do you need to be flexible and where do you need to be strong in your body in order to be a great hitter in volleyball? Number one is you're gonna have to have flexible hip flexors, okay? So your hips have to be really, really mobile so that you can feel full extension because you can't really hit hard if you can't jump. So the most important thing, and these get really tight when we're sitting all day, is to be able to open up our hips. So we're gonna do this just with a simple hip flexor stretch. Brandon's gonna get on one knee, perfect. And if you could turn to the camera, just a little, or turn sideways from the camera. The first thing that he's gonna do is flex this butt cheek right here and then he's going to rock forward, okay? Now what that does is that's putting a lot more pressure on the hip flexor. He can drop, if he didn't flex, he could drop and continue to do that without feeling any stretch in the hip flexor, maybe just a little bit. But what Brandon's gonna do is he's gonna flex first and then just push forward, where he's not actually gonna dip down, he's just gonna push forward. It's your basic hip flexor stretch and that is gonna pay off big, especially if you spend a lot of time sitting, which we normally do in today's day and age. So want to make sure that those hip flexors open up so that you can have a vertical and it doesn't inhibit your ability to explode when you jump. And then it doesn't inhibit your ability to hit hard because you won't be at the top of your swing. Should I be rocking back and forth or should I hold it in a specific spot? You can move it around and you can make sure that you feel like what's comfortable. And a lot of times you can twist or turn one way and you'll feel something different that's tightened. Yeah, if you lean one way or the other, You'll be solid and your body will pretty much tell you what to do. And if it feels pain, obviously don't do it, right? But if you feel like it feels a good stretch and you're going, I wouldn't recommend just like rocking back and forth because you do want to actively open it. Little known fact, this is the one stretch that you can hold, a static stretch that will actually make you jump higher. Every other stretch deadens your explosiveness. And this is the one that actually allows you to jump higher immediately after a static stretch. Crazy, right? Well, now you know. Now you know. Obviously, we need to be strong in our legs and glutes if you want to jump high and hit hard. So your legs have to be solid and they have to be strong. The best exercises for this are deadlifts, okay? Squats, front squats, back squats. If you're on the beach, you don't have weights at home, right? Here's a really simple exercise that you can do. So Brandon's going to turn sideways and he's gonna be on one knee really tough for stability and strength. First thing he's gonna do, this is level one, is he could just stand up like his a lunge. Go ahead and just stand up, boom. Now notice how he turned his foot. Again, let's do that same thing again. See where his foot is just pushing and it's helping him? Go ahead, stand up, good. That's level one of your leg strength, right? Level two, what we're gonna turn you to, is we're gonna make sure that his foot flattens out. So he's gonna make sure that his toenails face the ground, then he's gonna stand gets a little bit less assistance from his back leg. And level three, this is the one that we all have to be able to do if you wanna be a legitimate hitter and a legitimate jumper. Brandon, we'll see if he can do it. We'll see if he's legit. <laughs> he's gonna pick his foot out of the sand. He's not going to let his foot touch the sand again, but he's gonna stand on that leg. His foot touched the sand, he cheated. Let's try it again. This also involves a bit of mobility, right? Let's see it, pop up, there we go. It's not easy, right? Even for an elite professional athlete, not easy to stand up using no assistance from the back leg. 
I recommend hitting those up so that you have the one leg strength, stability, and you can explode when you jump. Next place we have to be strong is going to be our core and our obliques, okay? Lots of exercises can strengthen your core and obliques. We're moving away from just the basic sit up. You wanna be in plank positions, but if you're doing deadlift, squats, front squats, your core is going to strengthen naturally. So you can either do your basic plank or if you're doing deadlifts and front squats, you're gonna get strong enough in your core anyway. When you're doing a, a plank, what's the best, what are some things you should focus on? Mm. Again, when we like flexed our butt for that one hip flexor stretch, rocking them forward so that you don't get into this hyperextended position, right? Tilting the pelvis forward so that these stay engaged and you're not just leaning on the vertebrae of your spine. Because if you just let this slide through, then your spine just kind of crunches back just like that, and you're not actually holding your spine straight. Okay, so you want to be able to hold that spine straight, and rotating those hips forward is going to help you do that. Where we have to be flexible when we're hitting is through our torso. So there's a big difference, right? And if I'm going to turn sideways, I'm going to show you how to rotate your torso. And Brandon, you do it at the same time. You show them that way, I'll show them this way. Uh, you show them that way. Yeah. So we're both going to put our right hand on our back hip and we're going to push that forward. Then staying nice and tall, we're going to rotate our shoulder back, right? This flexibility allows us to rotate. And once this stretches, we can come back and fire through a throw or a spike in beach volleyball. So this is really important to be mobile through here where his hips stay stable and then he opens that torso. And he's got a lot of mobility here. He's open because he's a volleyball player, right? Some people don't have this opening and they get stuck and then everything turns at the same time. Well, once you're in the air, you don't have anything to turn from with your hips so you won't be able to stretch. So you have to take off with your hips slightly towards the net or neutral and then you can open up your torso. Most people think that your hips need to be this way so that you can then throw them in the air. That's not how the jump works. You're actually gonna jump by putting pressure from the back leg and then this is going to reach back. So one good exercise you can do to open that is get in a quarter squat. You face the camera, I'll face you. Quarter squat, open and push off the back leg. So extend onto your back toes and then open your right chest back. So quarter squat, push the right hip forward and extend it and rotate that chest back. That's nice, okay? We can also do a stretch for this. One really easy stretch that you can do is facing a wall, keeping your toes forward and just using the wall to rotate yourself back and open up. Right, you can press off the wall, but use your eyes to follow back behind you. And you can see how much our chests open here compared to our hips. Next place we need to be flexible, but not necessarily strong, just fast, is gonna be our chest. Yeah, we see that a lot, right? We see guys who come out to the beach and they got these pecs, but they can't bounce a ball for <laughs> nothing. So we wanna be loose here, not tight, because we have to be able to open that window. So having the flexibility through our chest is massively important. So everybody at home, if you're watching this video, I want you to put your arm to your side. Uh, Brandon, I'm gonna have you face the camera. Uh, sorry, face me. There we go. Now, without turning, he's gonna open his elbow wider than 180. Go ahead. Boom, right? This flexibility is important. If you can't get to that, your window is gonna be significantly smaller. There's gonna be less balls that you can hit hard. So being able to open that up is nice, all right? Part of being flexible here easy way to stretch that is just put your hand on a wall and then rotate down the side, okay? Hand on the wall, rotate away from it. Super basic, easy stretch, but I promise you it'll pay dividends. So do it every day, do it before every practice. Now, in order to open that, Brandon's gonna do it again. A lot of people end up flexing this muscle, the rear delt, so turn and face the net right? We don't want to flex here. So this should be dead and his arms should be completely loose. But this muscle here, the rhomboid, is going to stretch him open. So I want you to do it at home because it's really, it's tough, right? Flexing or opening without flexing the rear delt is really tough. So see if you can stay loose. Now flop your arm around while staying open. This tells us that he's able to be loose and whippy. 
and that's going to lead to a hard hit. So stretch through the chest, but don't open it up with your rear delts, open it up with your rhomboid, and then you'll be able to get that power. The next uh, place we want to be flexible is through our lats, and again, this is also going to open up through our chest. So subs cap, lats, and chest. We have to be here because our chest here is going to stretch and our hand is going to come through when we swing. So if we can't get our elbow past here, there's no way that you're going to have power or max height. A lot of people can't get their elbow here where it stays up tall and it's below or behind the ear. So can you do that, Brandon? Can you get your elbow back and behind your ear? Super. Now, can you get your wrist horizontal with that? So we combine tricep flexibility. Nice. And we're going to face this way. Good. Okay. Now, the hardest hits are going to come from a little bit of external rotation. So we get him to here. And notice that his elbow wanted to push forward when we did that. So we can stretch him back just like this. And then when he swings, whoop, it just comes through naturally because you're already in that stretch position. So that's going to be one sequence of your swing. Easy way to do this. Wrap anything around any sturdy pole. Hand up above your head. Get your uh, forearm so that it's horizontal. And then push forward and try to keep that head up. You do want to make sure that your elbow stays close to your body. That's going to give you a little bit of an extra stretch. That's nice. It'll also stretch out your tricep, right? They're connected. Beautiful. Okay. And the last band stretch that we're going to do, we can always do it uh, just standing. Or you can do it with a band if we lowered that. But just grabbing the back of your neck right here and then pushing the elbow back. So it's a really similar stretch, but because our hand is down, we stretch the tricep. And that is every bit of strength and flexibility you need to be able to hit hard. Let's move on. Okay, so key body positions. First, we gotta go over the ones that are gonna help you jump high, right? Most people, when they try to jump high, they know that you need your arms to lift them. But when they do that, what do they do? They tip over forward, right? So their whole body comes forward. When you jump, it should look like you're squatting, right? Like you can have 300 pounds on your back. So when you do jump, you should be here with your butt back and then your hands go back without tilting you forward, okay? So this is your first position, just quarter squat, hands back, chest up, show it. Boom, nice, okay? And you should feel a little bit of tension in your glutes to make sure that you're using those instead of leaning over with your quads. Now, show me a squat like you got squat on your back. Go ahead, right there. Now just throw your hands back. That's your jump position, okay? That's your strongest jump position and that's where you wanna be. So that's the first one, okay? Second one, important body position is the up and rotate. So this is where we went over in the mobility phase, but your right hip comes forward and your right chest goes back or your hitting hip comes forward, your hitting, hitting chest goes back. So that's our second position, go ahead. That's gonna open up our thoracic and we're gonna be there. Next hitting position, okay, is this elbow and chest sequence open. So we're right here and my chest is open, ready? When you do this, I want you to take this part of your elbow and your hand and wave to somebody behind you, as far behind you as you can get and the next position. So once we're there, waving to somebody behind you then our elbow comes up and our hand stays back. Notice how Brandon's out to the side. We want to get it up and our hand is back. That's it. So now my tricep is pointing forward and the top of my forearm is facing up and then it comes through. We're not going to freeze in that position, but it's a position that we need to hit on our way to our hip. Okay. So we open up, wave hello to somebody behind you. Elbow comes through high then hand follows, all right? And of course, the last position is right here. If you can rub your bicep on your cheek, that is about where you should contact the ball for a spike, right? Boom, that's where that ball is gonna hit. Yeah, give yourself a little whiff. Nice. You're so talkative, this video. Well, I don't have a microphone on me. Well, we can't, we don't have the budget. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of our first video on how to fix your arm swing. We did talk a lot about flexibility and strength and at betterbeach.com we have a great product that can help you increase all of that and it's our 60 day beach volleyball strength and conditioning program. It's guaranteed to get you a higher vertical and faster first steps and you 
know from this video that you're gonna be able to hit harder if you train and stretch the right way. Brandon's got something for you too. And if you're ready to go ahead and dive a little bit deeper on how to fix that arm swing and have a guided 10 day practice, we also have a product that is how to fix your arm swing in 10 days, where we're going to take you through 10 days of work that is guaranteed to fix your arm swing and help you score more points. Stay tuned for the second video in our three part series.